You may be seated. On behalf of the Centralia Intermediate School, we would like to welcome you to the 6th Annual CIS Veterans Day Program. At this time, I would like to introduce the Centralia Intermediate School Principal, Mr. Jason Lee. Can everyone hear okay? This sounds better than the earlier. Okay. Um, at this time, we would like to introduce the superintendent of schools here at Centralia, Mr. Darren Ford. It's certainly an honor to be here today on this special day. I would echo what Mr. Lee said about uh, Mrs. Dickerson and the work that she puts in, the staff are up to do it. Also, to the kids, they do a great job. We're very proud of them, and we welcome all the veterans here today. We would like to recognize those veterans that are in attendance. So, will anyone who has served in the Army, the Army Reserve, or the Army National Guard please stand? At this time, let us enjoy listening to the fifth grade students, directed by Brenda Kale and accompanied by Kate Ray, in their singing of Armed Forces, The Pride of America. Thank you. 
Coast Guard. Very nice. We have a very special guest with us today. This gentleman is a native son of Centralia, a 2002 graduate of Centralia High School, and currently a captain in the U.S. Army stationed at Fort Larry Wood, Missouri. It is my great privilege to introduce to you Captain Ryan Ball. Good afternoon. Thank you. Uh, it's quite an honor and a privilege to be here this afternoon. Uh, as he mentioned, I am a uh, native of Centralia. I grew up here my whole life. My family is still here, and I graduated in 2002 and went on to the Army. Uh, first and foremost, I want to thank each of you for coming and remembering such an important day in our history. Um, second, I want to give a big round of applause to our local BFW. They do a lot within our community. Uh, you'll see them at all the local parades, out presenting the flags and the colors part of the home football games, and a lot of communities that I've seen and been to don't do such a thing. So I'd like to give a big round of applause for you. <laughs> Second, I would like to thank uh, Ms. Kelly Dickerson and the school district here for doing such an event, um, because at first, my take was, why are we in school on Veterans Day? Uh, but to see that it's, it's remembered and it's honored in a way that it is today is important. Um, because if it was another day off, um, a lot of these young youth um, wouldn't know what the meaning of today is. And so it is important that we do this. So I also want to give a hand to uh, Ms. Kelly Dickerson and the school staff for doing this today. So, um, a year or a year and a half ago, um, I was asked by Ms. Uh, Dickerson to uh, come and speak to her class, and I actually uh, did a video Skype with um, some schools, uh, a classroom while I was in Afghanistan. I've spoken to the local Kiwanis and some other groups um, here within Centralia, so I'm always honored to be able to do such a thing. So um, she asked me a few months ago if I would be willing to come back and and speak again, and I thought, well, sure, if I'm available and I can be off, I would be more than happy to do it. And so I got my uniform in the car on uh, Friday, and, and I drove up here, and I'm going back this afternoon to start class tomorrow, and I uh, thought, it'll be a, you know, a short afternoon, uh, you know, speaking to a small classroom of kids again, and I pull into the parking lot, and I see, you know, a thousand cars out there, and I thought, well... Might have left that part of the information out, but not a big deal. Uh, you know, I, I've spoken to some large groups before, and um, some of you may know me, some of you may not. Some of you may know what I did at a point in my life, probably the most significant time in my life. Uh, after leaving school here in 2002, uh, I was asked to join the Honor Guard in Washington, D.C. 
So I wavered my original contract to go be a, an airborne ranger and do all that kind of fun stuff and, and went to the old guard in Washington, D.C. And shortly after arriving there, um, I, I saw the changing of the guard and all at the cemetery. And I'd seen this twice before um, on trips here from Centralia, once between my eighth grade and my freshman year, and again on an FFA trip. Um, and I thought, that's what I want to do. At the time that I visited, when I was uh, at those younger ages, I didn't realize what the significance of that event was. I thought it was another stop on the tours scene of Washington, D.C., and it was just another building or a monument that we would go see. And I didn't realize what those soldiers were doing or what they were representing out there. I didn't even know they were real people, for that matter, because they're so robotic, and I thought, well, you know, it's just another stop. And so when I saw, after I got there, I said, that's what I want to do. And uh, I'm sure many of you have maybe seen the emails or the website that talks about, you know, some of the things that we have to do and go through. And I'll be the first to tell you, not all of them are true. Uh, they're fabricated to a degree. But when I tried out for the tomb, uh, only about 10% succeed and, reserve, and, and earn the tomb guard identification badge. And I remember about two months into my training, I was trying to earn my first public guard change. It wasn't even a real walk yet because the cemetery was closing, but I was going to go out and I was going to get posted when the cemetery was closing. So it was going to be the first time that the public was going to see me and do what so many have done before me. And for those that know me, uh, Mr. Lee and Mr. Ford and some of the other teachers and faculty can probably tell you that I was the class clown uh, growing up. And I usually wasn't shy about getting in front of people and making a fool of myself or being in front of a large audience. Well, this was a little bit different. Uh, this was bigger than me. This meant more than just me. So I'm standing in what we call the knowledge court. And in order to earn a walk or a guard change for the first time, you have to give your trainer an already earned badge holder some high speed about the cemetery that he doesn't know. So I spouted off my high speed and he said, Ball, why should I send you out for this walk? Why is it so important for you to go out right now and make a fool of yourself and a fool of me and mess something up out there? So we got into this conversation about, you know, I'm ready, my shoes are shined, my uniform is pressed, I know my knowledge, and I'm ready. And he said, you know, why don't I take you over to the other part of the cemetery where we have 2,111 civilian war unknowns buried within one tomb. Why don't we guard, it? Why don't we guard the civilian war unknowns? Why don't we guard these three? And so we got into this discussion and, and um, you know, I didn't have the answers. I didn't know. I didn't know why. Um, but I did my best to try to spout off a, a philosophical, sounding good answer. And as we buried further into this, uh, we both look up and make eye contact, and there's tears running down both of our faces. And so I get ready to go out, and, I, and he, he gives me the walk. Um, and it wasn't until years later from our Tomb Guard Society webpage, uh, when we each made profiles, that that trainer of mine that was his most important, significant memory from the tomb, was that moment. And it was at that moment that I realized again that this was a bigger event than me. So, as some of you may know, excuse me for getting emotional, I apologize. Uh, guarding the unknowns was a very important thing in my life. And, excuse me, let me take a breath. Um, so some of you may know that... Uh, you know, the, the Canadian unknown soldier um, was killed a few weeks ago. Um, and that hit very close home to us, us active, us um, post guards at the, at the American unknown soldier, because we realize that today's world is not a safe world, regardless of um, what kind of blindfolds we wear or, or bags that are over our heads and, and, the, and the things that we choose to not accept. And... I go out and I do a lot of these speeches, and a lot, and a lot of the questions I get asked are, or one of the questions I get asked are, do, you, do the rifles that you carry work? The answer is yes, they work. They are functioning rifles. 
The next part is, do we have ammunition? No, we do not. And neither did the Canadian unknowns. And that soldier gave up his life defending the Canadian unknown. And a lot of people don't understand that. There was actually an individual, uh, I don't know the, the name of the Twitter account, for those of you that are familiar with Twitter, I don't use it, but um, an individual asked, why do we need to sacrifice a human life whether in America guarding our unknowns or in Canada, to guard someone that's already dead? And the simple answer is, it's to remember. It's to remember what we as a nation have been through over the course of the last hundred years defending our freedom, allowing us to sit here and speak English and have the freedoms and the abilities that we have. And so for three years... After that first time in that knowledge corner, I realized this would be something that I would have a short time to be able to do. And at that time, I didn't realize the significance of how much and how powerful that would be and live within me. And how emotional I would get when I talk about it. But that's why we do what we do. We guard the World War I, the World War II, and the Korean unknowns. Because every day for a tomb guard is Veterans Day, and Memorial Day for that matter. Because they paved the way for us to sit here and do the things that we do and the things that we enjoy. So, again, I want to thank each and every one of you for coming and listening to me speak and watching me cry up here in front of everybody. Um, but again, I want to thank uh, each and every one of you for uh, remembering such an important day in our history and continuing to, to train our young ones um, the importance of, of what it is to be free in this country. So, again, I thank you. Thank you, Ryan. We here in Centralia, your hometown, are all very proud of you and are grateful for the service that you've given to your country. At this time, I'd like to introduce the 7th and 8th grade Honors Choir. They are directed by Danielle Matthews, and they will be singing from sea to shining sea.
This year we have a special presentation in honor of another Centralia native, Rodney Griffith, an all POW and MIA. On May 2nd, 1970, a UH-1H helicopter from Company B, 229th Aviation Battalion, 1st Cavalry Division, was hit by ground fire and forced to land just over the border of South Vietnam near Cambodia. The aircraft was transporting members of the 34th Armor 25th Infantry Division, which included Sergeant Rodney L. Griffin and seven fellow soldiers along with flight crew members. The men were part of an attempt to stop the North, North, Vietnamese, North Vietnamese forces from gaining strongholds in Cambodia. President Nixon announced the request of Cambodia for American assistance on April 30th. Had we not assisted the North Vietnamese, in addition to having an effective sanctuary to which they could retreat without retaliation, would also have South Vietnam completely outflanked. The crew all survived the crash and had only 30 or 40 seconds on the ground to decide what to do. They all attempted to evade, each in different directions. Only 18-year-old Kariki managed to make it back to U.S. lines in two or three days. The rest were captured by enemy forces. Rodney Griffin and Captain Dale Richardson were seen running into the tall elephant grass and firing their weapons at the enemy. Their whereabouts were unknown. It is believed that these missing in action may also have become prisoners of war. Today we remember these men and all prisoners of war and missing in action, and in particular, this brave son of Centralia, Missouri, Rodney Lynn Griffin, Sergeant, U.S. Army, Headquarters, Company 2nd Battalion, 34th Armor, 25th Infantry Division, Date of birth, August 1st, 1948. Home of record, Centralia, Missouri. Date missing in action, May 2nd, 1970. It is our honor to present this flag to Daryl Griffin, brother of Rodney Griffin, on behalf of the students and staff here at the Centralia Intermediate School in remembrance of Rodney L. Griffin and all POW and MIAs. We are very proud of our students. After reading these essays, we really feel like they do understand what you veterans do for our country and the freedom that you give us. They worked hard on their essays and we truly believe it did come from their hearts.
At this time, we would like to read five of the letters that were sent to their veterans. Evan Bantam, Taylor Carrico, Kennedy Dickerson, Jacob Ashing, and Logan John Meyer. Dear Uncle Mike, I chose you because you helped our country keep our freedom. You sacrificed your life to let me make my choices. You fought to watch over our country. You helped me make right choices in life. I should have said this a long time ago, but thank you. The reason why I say this is you fought for the freedom you have given me. I will say thanks for serving in the Navy and for serving the country. I hope to see you there. It would be nice if you could come. I wish you could be there because it would be great and better if you would be there. It is on November 11th. Dear Aunt Abby, I chose you for my veteran because I am so thankful for you putting your life at risk to fight for our country's freedom. It is hard to leave family for a long time, and usually if you're in the military, you're gone for a while. Also, I chose you because you are a brave, courageous, and really giving person. I love you, Abby. Thank you for fighting for our freedom. It takes a big heart to put your life at risk like that. This Veterans Day, I hope you get lots of thank yous and nice comments. I wish you could come and accept the flock. I understand you have work and that you live eight hours away. I promise, though, that next time I see you, I will give you the flock. Again, thank you for being in the Army. I love you and can't wait to see you. Dear Dad, I chose you because you fought for our freedom. You sacrificed your life for us. I chose you because I love you and care about you. Lastly, you are a hero to the USA. Thank you for going to Germany when you could be watching TV at home. Thank you for fighting for others. Thanks for all you have done for the US. Thanks. Thank you. I love you, Dad. Hope to see you on November 11th. It's at the CIS gym. I'll be glad if you can come. I can't wait to give you the flat. Dear Grandpa, I chose you because you sacrificed your life for our country. I'm proud to be called your grandson. I chose you because you are my hero and I respect you from the bottom of my heart. That's why I chose you. Thank you for serving in the U.S. forces. Thank you for being so brave. Thank you for being so generous to serve in our country. Thank you for being ready to go into war. I hope you will be able to come to receive the flag on November 11th in the afternoon. I hope you can be there. Dear Chris, I chose you because you did what half of this world can't even do. You sacrificed a lot to go to the army. I chose you because you did the unimaginable. I chose you because you saved a lot of people in this country. I chose you because you are my hero. Thank you for watching over our country from all the bad guys. Thank you for everything that no one should be saying. Thank you for being who you are and what you are. Thank you for providing us the freedom to grow up safe and free. Hope to see you on November 11th, 2014 at the CIS camp. I hope, I hope you are thanking yourself for all the magnificent things you did. Next, we have five flags we're going to read. Danielle Bailey. Abigail Morrow. Gage Pemberton. Kennedy McCubbin. And Austin Tuggle. Thank you, Uncle Mark, for serving our country. Freedom has given me to be, freedom has given me the right to be who I am. Freedom means to have hope in my country. Thinking of a place where people can be free makes me happy. Soldiers risk their lives for our freedom. Thank you. 
Freedom means that people sacrifice their lives for us to do what we want to do. Freedom means that brave soldiers who are proud to serve the USA left their families behind. Thanks for having the ability to love people and to fight, pe fight for people who live in America. Freedom makes me feel safe when something bad is happening. Freedom makes people think of someone who fights for our rights, someone who would die for America and to keep us united. I'm blessed to have someone like you to fight for our freedom. Thank you very much. Freedom is here because of the men and women that have fought and are fighting for our country. I believe that our soldiers are some of the most brave people out there, just like you. Storm is a word that describes you completely. Thanks for letting me and my friends make our own choices. If it wasn't for you, your courage and sacrifice, we wouldn't be here having fun with friends. Freedom means that our men and women care about us. Thank you for letting us be free. Okay, at this time, we will present the flags to our guests. When you see your student walking down the steps, would you please stand so that they can see where they need to come to present you with the flag?
would like to say thank you to everyone. Okay, this is another part I can't get through, so I'll just warn you right now. <clears throat> I have a lot of people that help me with this program. And I couldn't do it without them. Some of them go way beyond what they're expected to do, and when I say, will you help me, they don't even question me. Some of them even come in on Saturdays when there's a Mizzou game on. Um, and I appreciate everyone that helps me with this program. But most of all, thank you, veterans, for giving us our freedom and helping us keep that freedom. At this time, we would like you to enjoy a video put together by Mrs. Custer showing you some of the process of what it takes to make this day happen. After the video, we will present a slideshow of all the veterans and the students that they are, the students that is honoring them.
at the conclusion of the program, we would like to invite all the veterans and their students to come up on stage and take pictures under the branch posters if you choose. Also, around the corner back behind this wall, you'll find posters of the veterans and the students side by side, which I think is similar or maybe the same as what we saw in the video. So if you want to go around the corner and get a picture of that, you may. At this time, could we please stand for the playing of taps? Thank you. 